Good morning, dear parents and my lovely students. Hope you all are doing good. I am Gayatri Singh, your computer teacher. In the last video, I have started the first chapter that is your input output process and storage devices and we have discussed in a brief way in the last video. So we are going to discuss in details about those devices. Okay, let's start. First, we have input devices. What are the input devices? Those devices which are helpful in sending or inserting data into a computer is called input devices. The basic example of our input devices is your uh, keyboard and mouse. Without these, you won't be able to uh, command. You won't be able to give command to the computer. How would a computer know what to do? So to give command, we need to insert something from the keyboard or uh, we have to use the mouse for pointing at something, right? So keyboard is our basic or the common input device. It is uh, a board of keys similar to a typewriter and uh, we use to type letters, numbers, special characters with the help of this keyboard. There are five types of keys which we can find in a keyboard that is your alphabet keys, numbers, special, function and navigation key. With the help of this diagram, you can locate all sorts of keys in your keyboard. Okay. Next, we have microphone. A sound card is necessary to enable the computer to record the sound in the form of a voice or music. In uh, the latest laptops or the computer systems, it's inbuilt. There is no need of uh, a separate microphone. Okay. Moving on to the next, touchpad. It is also called as a glide pad and is an input device on laptops and some keyboards also. Okay, It allows the user to move the cursor with their finger. It can be used in place of an external mouse. As uh, most of you are working on the laptops or the tabs, you must be knowing about uh, the touchpad. Okay. Moving on to the next, we have touch screen. It is a display device that allows the user to interact with a computer by using their finger or stylus. It's a kind of a light pen which we are going to see it later. Okay. They are a useful alternative to a mouse or a keyboard for navigating a variety of devices such as computer and laptop displays or smartphones or tablets. Moving on further, we have scanner. Scanner is an electronic device which can capture images from a physical items. What do you mean by physical items? The thing, the items which you can hold it in your hand or you can feel it with your hand. Okay, that is a physical item and can convert them into a digital format. What is digital format? The pictures or uh, the images which you see on the monitor screen, that is your digital format, which in turn can be stored in a computer and viewed or edited using software applications. Okay, suppose you scan some image, you can see it in an image viewer and if you scan some documents, you can view it in a word file or as an excel file. Okay, next we have digital camera. You all must be having these sort of cameras with you so you know the basic thing about these cameras. We can capture or uh, we can store data with the help of these uh, cameras in a photographic images form which is digital many current models are also able to capture sound or videos in addition to the still images kodak canon sony these are the few companies which make the digital camera and dominate the market webcam is a camera that can send live pictures from wherever it is sighted to another location by means of the internet. Many desktop computer screens and laptops come with an inbuilt camera or microphone. Uh, but if yours doesn't have, so you can uh, certainly add a separate webcam at any time. Now we are going to discuss about the pointing devices. There are two kinds of pointing devices. One is our mouse. Uh, a computer mouse is a handheld hardware input device that controls a cursor on a screen and can move and select text, icons, files and folders on your computer. For desktop computers, the mouse is placed on a flat surface that is called mouse pad okay, in front of your computer. These days we have wireless mouse in, as in this picture you can see it's a wireless mouse. Okay, Moving on to the next uh, pointing device, we are having this 
light pen see this pen is called your stylus okay the stylus which i was talking earlier now what is this light pen a light pen may also be used to describe the pen used with the graphic tablet as you can see over here this is a graphic tablet it is a light sensitive pointing input device commonly used to select or otherwise modify text or data on a screen next next we are having processing devices when i say processing device the picture of cpu comes in our mind okay but in actually what happens the cpu is this chip over here not that whole box okay no that's a casing in that casing we have this little chip that is called the brain of the computer cpu is a chip inside the computer which is placed inside the cpu cabinet the cpu is often referred to as the brain of a computer yes you already know that very smart kids however it is more appropriate to refer to software as the brain and the cpu as a very efficient calculator as we know that computer basically designed for calculations only the big big calculations okay a computer cpu handles all instructions it receives from the hardware and software running on the computer according to this statement cpu the brain of a computer receives data from the hardware as you can uh, see in this picture in place of input device we have this microphone and this uh, processing device the cpu receives the data from this microphone and it is working on that uh, data and it is copying that thing into this output device or a hard disk okay in this way this processing device or the cpu works cpu consists of three units memory unit which stores the data temporarily or permanently according to our need control unit this unit controls the working of all other units like your input devices output devices or uh, the storage devices in the last we have arithmetic and logic unit that is your alu unit this unit performs all the mathematical calculations and logical operations okay moving on to the next slide we are having our first output device that is a monitor monitor is also known as a screen or a visual display unit that is your vdu okay a monitor is an output device that displays video images and text as that is very evident because these days we are using the, this media very much we can see all kinds of videos images text okay a monitor is made up of circuitry a screen a power supply buttons to adjust screen settings and casing that holds all these components it, it is not just a box it's made up of all these things over here okay moving on to the next page we are going to discuss about three types of uh, monitors first is our crt or the cathode ray tube monitor you must not be seeing these monitor these days because they kind of replaced by the uh, more advanced lcds or leds okay these are big and heavy and use a lot of tech space and electricity hmm that's the biggest drawback it is the oldest technology used by the monitors and is based on the cathode ray tube technology that was developed for television uh, once uh, i was also having a tv uh, like this a big box kind of tv it was used to take a lot of space monitors are made with better parts which give a higher display resolution and picture sharpness than a television so monitors was the upgraded version of the television this type of monitor is no longer popular hmm next we are having lcd monitors that is uh, your liquid crystal displays lcd monitor use much less dex space are lightweight and use less electricity than crt and can be run off of batteries which makes them ideal for laptops see that's kind of technology i was talking about but it's relatively high priced and image quality which is not constant when viewed from 
different angles when you move uh, sideways from the monitor the picture quality tend to get deteriorate okay next we are having leds okay here what happens led monitors are said to use much lesser power than your crt or the lcds and are considered far more environmental friendly they are more durable to featuring a very thin design they also don't produce much heat while running that is why uh, they are environmental friendly the only downside is that they can be more expensive especially for the high end monitors like the new curved displays that are being released okay next we are having as an output device speakers a computer speaker is an output hardware device that connects to a computer to generate sound in some computer system we have a small speaker in the cpu okay but normally we prefer for these big big boomers <laughs> the signal used to produce the sound that comes from a computer speaker is created by the computer sound card okay the sound card is a necessity for uh, recording the sound and for producing the sound next the printer printer is a device that accepts text and graphic output from a computer and transfers the information to a paper usually to a standard size sheet of a paper like a4 size sheet which we have commonly seen in our schools at times we are having computer at our home also okay printers vary in size speed sophistication and cost in general more expensive printers are used for higher resolution color printing let's see the different kinds of printers first we are having this dot matrix printer you must have seen these kind of printers in the banks okay a dot matrix printer or a impact matrix printer refers to a type of computer printer with a print head that runs back and forth on a page and prints by impact striking an ink soaked cloth ribbon against the paper much like a typewriter have you seen a typewriter okay dot matrix printers are relatively expensive and do not produce high quality outputs they are basically seen in the bank only <laughs> moving on to the next printer that is your inkjet printer the widely used printers they are capable of creating high quality images and high resolution photos with vivid colors okay when we are talking about color pictures so inkjet printers are the one we should talk about they can work with most types of papers although they can work best with high quality papers of course if we are talking about image printing that means we need the best quality papers as inkjet printers are more affordable than other types of printers they are commonly used at home and business offices okay next we are having the laser printer a laser printer is a type of printer that uses a laser and electrical charges instead of the traditional printing of ink onto a paper that's why they are common at offices laser printers have increased the neatness and sophistication of print projects today's printers are very advanced and often also serve as copiers fax machines and scanners but they can also cost quite a lot to maintain and operate on a regular basis that's why we can't see them at our home they are seen at the offices only for the commercial purpose okay moving on to the next we are having 3d printer see very interesting 3d printers or the three dimensional printer is an additive manufacturing process that creates a physical object from a digital design by printing thin layers of material and then fusing them together we create a digital design uh, there is an application for 3d printing so we need to create our design on that app then layer by layer like very thin thin layer of this that design which we created in the 3d app is going to be created by this 3d printer and then it's gonna fuse them or merge them all together to make a whole 3d design a few examples of the 3d printers where it can be used 
are dental products, architectural scale models, reconstructing fossils, replicating ancient artifacts, reconstructing evidence in forensic pathology, movie props. There are many more. Okay. Next, we are moving to the storage devices. A storage devices at its sounds, uh, it's uh, any hardware capable of holding information either temporarily or permanently in a computer. Like our brain, a computer stores the data temporarily or permanently using short term or long term memory. Okay, we can retrieve the data from these devices whenever we require it. As you can see over here, we have a few common storage devices. We are going to discuss about storage devices in details. How does a computer stores or work on a data? We are going to discuss it next. Bits and bytes. A bit is a binary digit, the smallest increment of data on a computer. What is increment? Kind of something which is ascending, going up. A bit can hold only one of the two values that is either 0 or 1 corresponding to the electrical values of, off or on respectively. Because bits are so small, you rarely work with the information one bit at a time. Okay, Bits are usually assembled into a group of 8 to form a by it one bit is of no use like over here you can see computer bit that is on or off one or zero when we say about computer byte that means we can uh, use the bits to make a byte we are having over here eight bits to make a byte now a byte is just eight bits and is the smallest unit of memory that can be addressed in many computer systems the memory capacity determines how much data and instructions can be stored in the computer either temporarily or permanently. These are the predefined notations of your uh, different uh, uh, memory sizes. Like over here, bit means one bit that is your uh, zeros or ones. Nibble means four bits. Byte, eight bits. See, four bits, four bits. That means total 8 bits. That means one character. For example, A is your 1 byte. If we say A, B, that would be 2 byte. Now, kilobyte. 1 kilobyte equals to 1024 bytes. That is 2 or 3 paragraphs of text. So, in this manner, you can measure the memory size which is required by your data. 1 MB equals to your 873 pages of plain text. That is your 2,40,000 characters. In this way, it continues. Let's continue with the next slide. We are having two kinds of computer memory. One is your prime memory or your internal memory and the second one is your secondary memory or external memory. One by one, we are going to discuss about this. First, we are going to talk about internal or the primary memory. All the computers have main or the primary memory to store program and data while the computer is running. The data stored in the internal memory is erased when the computer is turned off. This is the biggest disadvantage of this internal or the primary memory. It is easier to access data or programs from this memory as it is the fastest of all forms of computer data storage. Now moving on to the next uh, type of uh, your internal memory that is your RAM, random access memory. As you can see over here, these are the few examples of your RAM. RAM is a volatile. Its contents are lost when power is turned off. When you switch off your computer, whatever you are working uh, with which is not safe, you are going to lose it. RAM also has a limited storage capacity. It is a place in a computer where the application programs and the data in current use are kept. Whatever we are working with uh, for the time being is going to be in the RAM. As it is volatile memory, it is very fast. Okay, Moving on to the ROM, read-only memory. ROM is a non-volatile. The content of the ROM remains stored even if power is turned off. It can be stored permanently 
we can uh, we can't lose it if we turn off the system okay rom contains a set of startup instructions that is what to do when a computer is turned on we can only read the programs and data stored on it but we cannot write on it okay that's why we call it a read only memory we can read it but we can't edit it okay moving on to the next type of memory that is your external or the secondary memory as you can see over here these all are the kind of a secondary memories the, this kind of memory is essential because of the limited storage capacity of the internal memory of a computer it stores data for a long period of time secondary memory is not accessed directly by the central processing unit it is slower in data pro accessing the data from a secondary memory is first loaded into a ram and then it is then sent to a processing unit moving on to the next hard disk from your operating system down to your mp3 collection all of it resides on your hard drive this is your hard drive this is, these are the external hard drives this is your actual hard drive inside your cpu if you think of your hard drive like a closet higher capacity drives equates to more room inside the closet see hard drive capacity is measured in gigabytes larger drives are measured in terabytes a 1 tb hard drive has roughly 1000 gb of storage space that is lot next a cd or dvd is an optical storage devices which can hold text graphics sound images and videos dvds are capable of storing a significant amount more data than a standard cd in dvd we can record movies with high video and sound quality to read and play dvds on a computer you must have a dvd rom drive and a dvd player like this over here moving on to the next blue ray disc the blu-ray disc and drives are an upgrade and replacement of the cd and the dvd disc and drives a blu-ray player can read blu-ray discs dvds and cds but a dvd player cannot read a blu-ray disc with their high storage capacity they can hold and play back large quantities of high definition videos and audios as well as photos and data and uh, other digital contents flash drives or pen drives as you already know about these uh, pen drives as you can see over here i searched few uh, cute pen drives for you pen drives has replaced the floppy drives of old and have become the most popular data storage devices among consumer micro lightweight and handy a pen drive can be easily carried from place to place by students professionals academicians and independent tech consultants memory card you must have heard about these memory cards a memory card is a type of storage media that is often used to store photos videos and other data in electronic devices we all are using smartphones we all have these kind of mini memory cards Devices that commonly use a memory card include digital cameras, digital camcorders, handheld computers, MP3 players, cell phones, game consoles, and printers. Also, the size of the memory card is fixed and cannot be increased. If suppose it is uh, written over here 64 GB, you can't increase it to 128 or uh, more. Okay, you must be careful before buying. This is it for today. Hope you understood the topic which we covered today. If you have any doubt please contact me in our team group thanks a lot for hearing me thank you bye bye